Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, I'll show you how to replace your hall sensor if you get a hall sensor error in your hub motor. And while we're in there, I'll show you how to grease up the nylon planetary gears. So stay tuned for the rest of the video. I'm not gonna go over details on how I removed the back wheel, but I did another video on how to change tires, so you can check that video out if you wanna know how to remove the back wheel. I'm just removing the disc brake and there are six four millimeter allen bolts holding the hub into the housing so i just removed those Here you can just take the wheel and press the axle against the ground and it should pop the hub motor right out of the housing. You don't have to take your cassette off to remove the hub motor, which is nice. All right, here I have the hub motor. I brought it inside just because it's easier to work on on the bench. And if you notice, there's like a little bit of heat shrink around this metal wire that goes around the wire. And what that does is it protects it when the rotor bolts are spinning. If it hits it, it's not gonna rub the plastic. It's just gonna hit the metal, which is more wear resistant. So I like to pull that back behind the shaft so it gives the collar around the middle of the hub housing to clear and not get snagged on it when you're pulling this out right here in this part. So here I'm just doing a quick diode test to the hall sensors and if you notice I'm putting uh, the ground on the positive leg and then the signal I'm putting the positive and that's giving it a, um, a voltage drop and the middle one wasn't showing any voltage drop so it was I knew that was the bad one. But what's funny is the new hall sensors actually didn't test like that. I had to actually hook up 5 volts and detect the voltage when I passed the magnet around it but ended up being this middle one so I don't know if that test is good just for this brand of hall sensors but it didn't work on the new ones but the new ones were still good here I yanked out the hall sensor after cutting the legs off and now what I have to do after this is unsolder the legs that are still stuck into the board. So here I'm going to heat it up and pull each leg out of each hole. And then clean up the solder a little with a copper soldering wick to wick up all the excess solder just so I can get a clean surface to work with.
So these are the replacement hall sensors. I'll put a link below. They're Honeywell S41 hall sensors. Um, it's been said that the Bethang motors or these hub motors that are made in China use probably cheaper aftermarket hall sensors and that's probably the reason why this one went. Um, I was thinking about replacing the other two but I decided not to just because I was kind of lazy I guess but I could always just pop the motor open and replace whichever one goes in the future but these Honeywells are supposedly better in a way that they handle more heat um, they're higher operating temperatures so if you do decide to open up the motor you might want to do all three I just decided to do one for now not a big deal maybe I'll do the other two if one more goes but here I'm gonna line up the legs and instead of going to the back of the board like the original I'm just gonna solder them to the back just because it's easier to access I probably could have pushed them through but it would have been a lot more work and I didn't want to really damage the holes or try to make them larger so here I'm just going to solder them to the back of the PCB where it'll make a good connection and then I'll just dab a little bit of epoxy on top of the legs just to hold everything in place a little better All right, after soldering this on, you might want to put some five minute epoxy on the legs of the hall sensor just to hold it a little more in place. And after you do that, you should have a working hall sensor. And I just double checked by just texting the continuity between the wires and the actual legs on the hall sensor. And here, I'm just going to wipe the motor down. I'm going to use a toothbrush and get as much residual old grease out of the nooks and crannies of the gears and try to remove all the old stuff. And here is the Super Lube Multipurpose Synthetic Grease I'm using. I'll put a part number and a link to it in the description below. You can get it at Harbor Freight or Amazon. And I'm just going to put a liberal amount on the nylon gears here. And this grease is nylon compatible. It's also dielectric. And it's, uh, it's also food safe, so you can use it for other things around the house. It's a good synthetic grease. You can actually use it on the Z rods on a 3D printer, uh, like the Bamboo Lab 3D printers. So it's actually a um, pretty us useful, versatile grease. Here I'm going to put a liberal amount on the nylon gears and spin it around so I can get on the insides and later I will also clean the housing out which is still attached to the bike tire and by putting a liberal amount on these nylon gears I won't have to grease up the bell the outside housing of the motor 
is it should transfer a lot of the grease there and it should be plenty. Here I opt to put the grease on the axle shaft just to prevent water intrusion or any corrosion and that will help keep the water out between the seals and everything. And to put the motor top back on you just String the motor wire through, and when you do push it back in, you want to slide back the metal protective coil and also the heat shrink below so it protects the wiring. You kind of just got to work it into the bearing, and it should just kind of go in once you get it seated good. Alright, and here I already cleaned out the outer housing and the motor should just drop right in and the planetary gears should just mesh right up with the outer housing gears and the bolts should just line up with the holes the holes should line up with the bolt holes and then you can verify it by just spinning the center to make sure everything spins freely and from there you gotta Tighten it back up with the six four millimeter Allen bolts. And you really should start them by hand, not like I did it with this first one. And if you want, you could use a little Loctite on this. I use them on the brakes, but not on this motor housing. The motor housing, I do tighten down with my impact driver on low pretty, until it clicks twice. So that should be sufficient. And after you get all the screws back in, you can just reverse your steps on how you took the rear tire off. Put the chain onto your cassette and then line up the disc in between the pads. Put the axle through the dropout and then you can, if you do have torque washers, you should put those on, which I installed aftermarket on mine. And then you tighten up your axle bolts and on the axle bolts I do recommend using Loctite I'm using a blue Loctite and you want to make sure you tighten those nice and snug and you should check those every once in a while and hopefully you guys have a working bike now and if you do and you like this video and it helped you please like it share it to other people that need help and as always thank you for watching